Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Lady B got medical attention for her baby. The second story, Boss's wife yelled at me and made me not do my job. I got her and my boss fired. The third story, I found a loophole in the boss's rules. And the first story is, Lady said her child needed to go to the hospital. I am an RN. A few years ago, I was working at a walk-in clinic in the middle of a downtown in a large Canadian city. Now, as a walk-in clinic nurse, I'm used to a lot of entitlement from patients. Those who believe that they can jump the line of other people who've been waiting 5 plus hours to see the doctor simply because their symptoms are more important. Those that don't understand that when we say that we have closed registration early, in order to be able to close at our official time of 9.30pm, it means that they can't be seen, even if it's only 8pm when they come in. Those that have become verbally and physically abusive towards me if they don't get their way. A lot of the doctors that worked with me seem to have a lot when faced with patient's ire. So if I told the patients that they couldn't be seen due to the clinic policy of wanting its employees to actually get sleep before having to come back in the next morning, they would attempt to go around me and appeal to the doctor, who would inevitably cave. This angered me on a lot of levels. Firstly, these doctors were simply rewarding this disgustingly selfish behavior by capitulating. Secondly, they were lending credence to the belief that a lot of patients had, I was a mere subordinate to the doctor and not my own autonomous practitioner. Thirdly, I was nurse manager of this clinic. The doctors were on call at the behest of the clinic and as such did not technically have authority upon our hours as nursing staff and receptionists. Fourthly, we're supposed to act as a united team. So one particularly trying night, a lady came in with her toddler child. She came in at around 8.45 and we still had another two hours of people waiting to be seen. We had closed registration at 6pm and we're not accepting any new patients. I'm in the back of the clinic performing a wound cleaning when the receptionist calls me and asks me to come up front as there's an aggressive patient demanding their child to be seen. So I head out to the front. The lady's standing at the desk, arms folded, snapping at her child to sit still. I glance at the child, who's sitting on a chair, swinging their legs and babbling away happily to anyone who will listen. Eyes bright, smiling, laughing. Doesn't look unwell, I think to myself as a cursory assessment. As soon as the lady sees me with my stethoscope, she launches her tirade. Doctor, my child is extremely unwell. She has asthma and can barely breathe. She needs to be seen immediately. I glance deadpan back at the child, who's singing loudly to herself. I look back to the lady. She doesn't seem to be in distress, ma'am. The lady tenses up and stares at me as though I'm a complete effing moron. Well, where the heck did you go to medical school? She inquires with the auditory level of a banshee. Kids present very differently than adults when they can't breathe. What are you, 12? I walk over to the child and place my hand gently on her back. I count her respirations as she falls quiet under my touch, and I observe her scapula as they expand and contract, indicating full chest expansion. I listen to the smooth sounds of her inspiration and expiration, audible even without a stethoscope. I observe the moistness of her conjunctivae as she rubs her eyes, and I see the glistening wetness of her tongue as she licks her lips. She's well hydrated. I'm not a doctor, I'm a nurse, I say, as I plug my stethoscope into my ears and begin to listen to the child's lung fields. Of course you don't know what you're doing, she yells. I didn't bring my ill child to see some stupid nurse. I demand to see a doctor now. She needs to go to the hospital, and if she gets worse, I'll have your license. Child's lung sounds are perfect. I lean down and smile at the child. How are you feeling, I ask her. She wants my stethoscope. I hand it to her. I'm bored, she says, understandably. I look to the lady. Registration closed some time ago because as you can see, we have many patients to see and we'll end up being here past closing. I'm afraid that we cannot see your child today. Based on my physical assessment, I cannot triage her up the line as she does not seem to be in respiratory distress. There are several hospitals close by that I can direct you to if you wish. A slow purple flush begins to crawl over her features. I smile blandly at her as I await the inevitable SH storm about to erupt. She walks up to me and leans into my face. I stand my ground, staring non-committally back. The rest of the waiting room is staring intently. Get. The. Effing. Doctor. The doctor is seeing patients, ma'am. I cannot interrupt him. My child is going to die because of you, you disgusting, low-educated piece of filth. Get the effing doctor! 
I'm about to repeat my previous statement when I suddenly hear a slight cough behind me. It's the doctor. Internally, I sag. Great, he's gonna usher them in and I get to look like an idiot in front of everyone again. What seems to be the problem? He asks, staring quizzically at the lady. She rushes over to him and clings to his arm. Oh, thank God, doctor. My child, she has asthma. She's run out of her puffers and is in an attack. This nurse refused to let her see you. The doctor stands there resolute and disentangles his arm from her vice grip. He takes a cursory glance at the child, who's begun delightedly listening to her own stomach with my stethoscope. He then walks over to me. Now, this is a doctor whom I have not met before tonight. I prepared for the worst. Nurse, I assume you perform triage? I nod. Yes, I say. I do not see any evidence of respiratory distress. Lung sounds? Non-adventitious, I say. Fancy way of saying clear as F. Mucous membranes? Fancy way of asking about hydration status. Pink, moist. Capillary refill? Fancy way of asking about blood flow. Immediate. The doctor turns toward the lady, and this is when I realize that he's been watching this entire exchange from the beginning. I'm calling you an ambulance. The lady blinks. What? Why? You said that she needed to go to the hospital. If that is what you think, you know your child better than I do. I'd rather be safe than sorry. The lady looks nonplussed. But, but, the nurse said that she isn't in distress. The doctor smiles humorlessly. What, this nurse right here? The one you were accusing of negligence and lack of knowledge? I trust this nurse's assessment. She's been very perceptive and professional for the long night that I've had the fortune to work with her. However, she, like myself, cannot know the intricacies of your child's history. It would be negligence indeed if we were to dismiss your concerns as a parent. Nurse, please call the ambulance. Unable to keep the SH eating grin off of my face, I walk to the phone. The lady's trying to argue with the doctor who's walking away. Best of luck to you, ma'am. I'm sorry that you've had to wait so long. But it's best that we leave this to the professionals, hmm? And a shame it is, too, as this is flu season, and all of the emergency departments are full to bursting with people waiting to be seen. Prepare for a very long wait. And with that, he returned to the examination rooms. I hung up after exiting the call with EMS. The lady was visibly shaking. A few smiles littered the faces of those watching. EMS should be here shortly. If your child's status worsens, please have my receptionist call me back out. Have a good night, ma'am. Vindication has never felt so sweet. The next story is... Yell at me for wanting to fix your PC? Okie dokie then. I'm the head of IT for a large line of dealerships in West TN. These dealerships deal with the government a lot, mainly selling cars and stuff to police and emergency services. Because of this, our cybersecurity stuff has to be tight as a barrel and locked down, which I usually do very, very well. I also have a coworker who we will call C. She's in her early 60s and has smoked most of her life and has a thick trailer park accent. Her skin looks like yellow paper and she drinks non-stop. Her job is to run the cashier desk because her husband is the GM of the main dealership. It was last Tuesday when I noticed an error from C's computer. Now, her computer handles all the credit cards, and if it gets a virus, it gets first priority. So I run a scan on her computer, and lo and behold she has a virus that's funneling data out like a hole in a bucket. So I go to talk to her and let her know I need to fix her computer. Here's the convo. C. Uh, me. Hey C, I'm gonna need to fix your computer. You have a virus. C. What? No! You don't have the authorization to touch my computer? Me. I'm the head of IT. I can do what I need to when needed. C. No you effing can't. I'll talk to my husband. At this point she yelled for a bit about my age, 23 years old, and about how millennials lie. Then she gets up to get the GM slash husband. GM, don't touch her computer. We'll have a professional look at it. Meaning his son, not a professional. Me, that's a really bad idea. We already have to let people know what's happened because it's a breach in our security. If we get audited, it would be even worse. Here's where I got mad. GM, listen, you're a kid and this is the adult world. Just do what I say. Me, silent rage building, nods. GM, besides, we barely use you and we really don't need an IT department. We've operated for 30 years without one. Me, can you write down specifically what you want me to do so that I know exactly what my duties are from now on? At this point, the GM and C both did so and signed the lists. C, I hope you learned something from this. Me, I sure did. After this, I went home and decided that maybe we needed an audit. So I called some of the agencies we work with and hinted that they might want to audit us. Fun starts here. I walk in the next day and find out not one, not two, but four of the agencies sent someone to audit our records and systems. 
We failed spectacularly, and the reason was because we had a virus on the main payment computer. I get called into the CEO slash owner's office. Owner, what the heck happened to our system? Me, virus got in it. Owner, how? Me, well it's mainly cause C, C interrupting, it's cause he looks at porn. Me, nope, it's cause C and GM told me not to fix their computers and change my duties. C, that's a flat out lie. GM got called in at this point, and CEO asked him if this is all true. GM, no, it's not, we never, me interrupting. Here are the papers they both signed telling me specifically what to do, and here's the ticket for her computer she had me close. Slide paper across the desk to CEO. CEO, thank you. Go on and go do your work and fix the system. The two of you stay behind. Later that day I walked by her cubicle and she was packing her stuff in a box. The GM was also packing his stuff, and they were both apparently blackballed from working in the area's dealerships. We also lost two multi-million dollar contracts. Best part was that when I walked out to my car, she was sitting on the front step crying, and she saw me and said, C, can you give me a few bucks since you have me over? So I took out a dollar from my wallet, and in big bold letters I wrote, I hope you learned something from this. And then I handed her the dollar and went on my merry way. The last story is, my boss was a tuck your shirt in Nazi, among other things, so I figured out a loophole. For a little background, I used to work in a call center selling vacations for a major hotel chain. My boss was a huge D. All he did all day long was walk around and make sure everyone had their shirt tucked in, and generally be a negative P who everyone hated. No customers ever saw us, and we were secluded from every other department because we were really loud. If you've ever worked in outbound sales, you know what I mean. There was literally no reason to tuck in shirts, but the boss for some reason thought this would help us sell better. I was the top salesman on the night shift and third overall in the company. It didn't help at all. So I come into work on my birthday, and my friend runs up to me and yells, Redditing while working, happy birthday, right in front of my boss's office. He looks up and says, Redditing while working. I'm thinking he's going to say happy birthday, since he no doubt heard her. Instead he said, yeah, go ahead and tuck your shirt in, kay? And he does the hand signal like he's tucking in an imaginary shirt. So I say, okay, no prob. I just have to put my stuff down real quick and I'll take care of it. So I walk over to my desk, which takes approximately 7 seconds to get to. I go to put my stuff down, and as I am he comes up behind me again and says, Hey, I said to tuck in your shirt. So I quickly tuck it in. And as he's walking literally right by me, I say, sorry, I just had to put my stuff down first. And he walks by like I never said a word. Immediately I bust out my HR manual and check out the rule on tucked in shirts. Turns out you must tuck in all shirts except a Hawaiian shirt or a Gaia Barra shirt. So right after work I take my A to Walmart and buy 10 of those effers and wear the most obnoxious Hawaiian looking shirt the next day. The second I walked in, he he looked me up and down, glared, turned around and walked away. When everyone asked why I was wearing such a ridiculous shirt, I told them about the loophole and within a week half my office was wearing Hawaiian shirts. It drove my boss crazy, all within the guidelines outlined by company policy. Apparently Hawaiian and Gaia Barra shirts are designed not to be tucked in. Maybe the person who wrote the policy must have liked those shirts. Beats me but it was awesome. As an update to the story, the boss eventually got fired for having an affair with one of the girls in the call center while he was in his office. I had already moved on to another company by then, but when I heard, I got a nice chuckle out of it. Thank you for subscribing and likes.